Hello, in a reciprocating engine for efficient combustion, we need air, fuel and fire. Regarding air, we have already read in the induction system. Regarding fuel, we have studied in the fuel system and for ignition, for fire, for getting spark, we need to understand the ignition system. So, let us see how fuel and air mixture in the engine cylinder is ignited, how the spark is generated and how do we get efficient combustion. So, let us start the ignition system. Now, ignition event in the four stroke cycle, we all know that the engine is operating on auto cycle, it is a four stroke five event cycle. During the intake stroke, the piston moves downward and the fuel air mixture is inducted into the cylinders. So, in the intake stroke, the fuel air mixture is coming in and this is the intake stroke and the first event. During the compression stroke, the piston moves upward to compress the fuel air mixture and this is the second event. So, the first event is the intake stroke, the second event is the compression stroke where the piston is moving up and the fuel and air mixture is being compressed. Now, when the piston is moving up during the compression stroke, before the piston reaches stop dead center, an electric spark jumps across the points of spark plugs and ignites the fuel air mixture. This is the ignition event or the third event. So, just when the piston is moving on the compression stroke upwards, just before the piston reaches top dead center, a spark jumps across the electrodes of the spark plug and the fuel air mixture in the cylinder gets ignited. This is your ignition event or the third event. Once your fuel air mixture is ignited due to the burning mixture and expansion, the piston moves downward. This is your power stroke and the fourth event. And during the exhaust stroke, the piston is moving upward from bottom dead center to top dead center, the exhaust gases are being exhausted out and this is your exhaust stroke and the fifth event. So, we have seen that there are five events and ignition is the third event. So, now what is all ignition about? Let us see. Basically, the purpose of the ignition system is to provide periodical sparks to each cylinder at a certain position of piston and valve travel for efficient combustion. So, that is the basic purpose of your ignition system to provide periodical sparks at a certain position of piston and valve travel so that you can have proper combustion. Now, the reciprocating engine ignition systems they are basically classified as magneto ignition system or a FADEX system. FADEX system is also called the full authority digital engine control system. Here in this lecture, we are going to cover only the magneto ignition system. This is just to tell you that the ignition systems are basically two types, magneto ignition and the FADEX system. Now, magneto ignition system, it can be also further classified as following. It can be single or dual magneto ignition systems. It can be a low tension or high tension system. It can be a system where the magnet is rotary or the inductor rotor type and you can have the magnetos as flange mounted or base mounted. So, there are different types of systems. Single magneto ignition system consists of two single magnetos and necessary wiring on the same engine. So, here in the diagram you can see that there are two magnetos shown. One is your left magneto and the other is the right magneto. We will understand what magneto is, but there are two units, independent units and the associated wiring. So, this is called the single magneto ignition system because you have independent units. In dual magnetos, you have one rotating magnet that feeds two magnetos in one housing. So, dual magneto means you have two units in one and that is your dual magneto with, which has one rotating magnet only. 
Then coming to the low tension and the high tension system, in the figure you can see the top figure is for the low tension magneto system, the bottom figure is for the high tension magneto system. The low tension magneto system generates a low voltage that is distributed through a transformer coil near each spark plug. So, in the engine you have number of cylinders and on each cylinder you have two spark plugs. So, this in the low tension magneto system you have a transformer coil near each spark plug. So, the purpose is to generate a low voltage that is distributed to a transformer coil near each spark plug. Now, with the development of new materials and shielding, the problems that associated with high tension magnetos have been overcome now. So, earlier there were problems in the high tension magneto systems because of the materials, since you were generating high voltage and high voltage was being transmitted to the spark plugs through the leads. So, now because with improved material those problems have been overcome and because of that the high tension magneto system is now widely used in the aircraft ignition system. Now, let us see the high tension magneto system, how is it operating, what is the theory behind it. The system comprises of three units, one is the magneto, basically the ignition system will have a magneto, it will have the ignition harness and the spark plugs. So, let us see how the magneto operates. The magneto comprises of three circuits, the magnetic circuit, the primary circuit and the secondary circuit. So, magneto has got three circuits, primary circuit, secondary circuit and a magnetic circuit. These circuits work together to produce the high tension spark at the spark plug. Now, all these systems, all these circuits, they are working together to produce the high tension spark at the spark plug. The magnetic circuit comprises of a permanent magnet. Here in the figure you can see, there is a permanent magnet. This is a permanent magnet, a coil core. This is your coil core, you can see here this is your coil core, pole shoes, you can see the pole shoes here and the pole shoe extensions. So, the magnetic circuit has got a magnet, permanent magnet, coil core, pole shoes and pole shoe extensions. The primary circuit comprises of the primary windings of the coil, the breaker points or contacts and the condenser or capacitor and the primary circuit will have the primary coil, the breaker points and a capacitor. So, this is your primary coil. We have seen that the magneto system has got three circuits, a magnetic circuit, magnetic circuit had a rotating magnet, permanent magnet with a coil core, pole shoes and pole shoe extensions. In the primary circuit, we have a primary coil, breaker points and a condenser or capacitor. The secondary circuit comprises of the secondary windings. You can see in the figure, these are the secondary windings. The distributor and rotor, this is your distributor and rotor. The high tension ignition leads, these are the leads going from the distributor, the ignition leads and the spark plugs. Here you have the spark plugs. This is your spark plug. So, the secondary circuit has the secondary winding the distributor and rotor, high tension ignition leads and the spark plug. So, in the diagram you can see some a basic diagram where you see there is a rotating magnet, you have pole shoes, you have a primary winding, this is your ignition switch here which controls the entire circuit, then this is your secondary winding, this is your coil core, here is your distributor, then you have the ignition leads and this is your spark plug. On this side, you have the breaker contact points and the condenser across the breaker contact points. So, this was the three circuits in brief in a magneto system. Now, coming to the first circuit, magnetic circuit. The magnetic circuit comprises of a permanent multipole rotating magnet. Now, it is a multipole, you can see here there are various poles north, south, north, south, multipoles 
it is a rotating magnet a soft iron core and pole shoes these are your pole shoes the magnet geared to aircraft engine has poles arranged in alternate polarity now this magnet this is geared this is meshed to the aircraft engine and it has poles in alternate polarity you can see here you have north then you have south again north and then again south then again north so this is you have the alternate polarity it is a rotary type magnet which is geared to the aircraft engine due to the rotation of the magnet in the gap between the pole shoes the magnetic lines of force pass out of the north pole through the coil core and back to the south pole of the magnet now when this magnet rotates since this is meshed to the engine when this magnet rotates the magnetic lines of force pass come out from the north pole pass through the coil core and then enter the south pole so you can see the magnetic lines of force moving from left to right the magnetic lines of force will produce an electrical voltage now because of these magnetic lines of force you have electrical voltage produced when the magnet is at a position as shown in the first figure now this is your first figure when the position of the magnet is in this position where you have north pole here aligning with the left pole shoe and the south pole aligning with the right pole shoe this position in this position you have the maximum magnetic lines of force passing through the coil core this particular position is called the full register position and the flux the magnetic field is flowing from left to right it is flowing clockwise through the magnetic circuit from left to right through the coil core so here we have seen this is the full register position the first figure the full register position in which case you have the magnetic maximum magnetic lines of force passing through the coil core moving from left to right and it is called a full register position further movement of the magnet moves its poles away from the pole shoes now when this after this position when the magnet is rotating when it starts rotating it is this north pole is moving away from the pole shoes because of the movement of this north pole away from the pole shoe there will be decrease of flux passing through the coil core now the magnetic lines of force magnetic lines of which are passing through the coil core will decrease because the rot rotating rotary magnet has further moved lines of force lines of flux passing through the coil core gradually decrease as the magnet moves farther away from the full register position now as the magnet moves away from the full register position your magnetic lines of flux which are passing through the coil core will gradually decrease and finally no flux lines will pass through the coil core when the magnet is at 45 degrees from the full register position now when the magnet is at 45 degrees from the full register position in that case there won't be any lines of flux passing through the coil core this position is called the neutral position so the second figure here this is your neutral position where no flux is passing in the first position it was the full register position where maximum lines of flux were passing through the coil core and it was called the full register position the second picture is the neutral condition where no lines of flux are passing and the pole of the magnet here you see one pole of the magnet north pole is exactly in the center between the two pole shoes in the neutral position one of the poles of the magnet is centered between the pole shoes of the magnetic circuit lines of flux passing through the coil core gradually increase as the magnet moves further clockwise now magnet when further moves this magnet will gradually move towards the pole shoe and from zero this will result in increase of magnetic lines of flux passing through the coil core lines of flux passing through the coil core will gradually increase as the magnet moves further clockwise from the neutral position and finally maximum lines will pass through the coil core where the magnet has moved a total of 90 degrees now if you see the neutral position the second picture here the magnet pole 
is in the center as the magnet further moves this pole will gradually align with the pole shoe on the right side and magnetic lines of field flux which are passing through the coil core will gradually increase and finally a position will come when this pole is completely aligned with the pole shoe and you will have maximum lines of field passing through the coil core again this is the full register position but in this case if you see that the magnetic lines of force are passing from north pole to south pole that is they are moving from right to left so in the first picture we had the full register position where the lines of flux were passing from left to right in the third picture we again have the magnetic lines of force passing through the coil core but this time the direction is opposite where the field is moving from right to left so 0 degrees it was moving from left to right at 90 degrees of magnet rotation it is moving from right to left but this time the flux lines flow through the coil core in the opposite direction as the magnetic north of the magnet is now in front of the right pole shoe now you see the magnetic north earlier it was in front of the left pole shoe now it is in front of the right pole shoe instead of the left pole shoe as was the case during first full register position as the magnet is rotated the change in flux density in the coil core without a primary coil around the core is shown in the graph now if we observe this graph in the bottom figure this is this called this is called a static flux curve where the when the magnet is rotated the change in flux density in the coil core is reflected in this graph here you see the flux is at the maximum position the flux decreases from maximum to zero the flux is decreasing from maximum to zero as the magnet moves from full register to neutral position now if you observe the this top figure at zero you had maximum flux passing you have you have maximum flux here and till the time the magnet reaches 45 degrees the flux is zero so now you see the flux is decreasing from maximum to minimum it has at 45 degrees it is completely zero now with further movement of the magnet you see from 45 degrees to 90 degrees the flux again starts to increase but in the opposite direction in this graph if you observe that the from 45 to 90 degrees the flux has again started to increase from zero it is increasing but in the opposite direction and at 90 degrees it is again in the full register position but in the opposite direction the flux flow reverses and begins to increase as the magnet moves to the neutral position the rotating magnet affects the coil core and causes an increase and decrease in the magnetic field and a change in polarity each 90 degrees of magnet travel so this rotating magnet it will affect the coil core yes and it will cause an increase and decrease in magnetic field you see here it was a decrease in magnetic field from 0 to 45 degrees again from 45 to 90 degrees again it was an increase in the magnetic field so there is a increase and decrease in magnetic field and a change in polarity each 90 degrees of magnet travel so every 90 degrees of magnet travel there will be increase and decrease of the magnetic fields as well as change in polarity so this was about the basic theory of operation of a magneto of a magnetic circuit let us see how the primary circuit is operating so now coming to the primary electrical circuit uh, we have mentioned earlier that the primary electrical circuit has a primary coil a condenser and breaker contact points so in the figure you can see a primary coil here then you can see the breaker contact points and a condenser across the breaker contact points so let us see what the primary electrical circuit is it comprises of a coil made up of a few turns of heavy copper wire so you have few turns but heavy copper wire then you have a set of breaker, breaker contact points and a condenser or a capacitor which is attached in parallel to the breaker contact points 
one end of the primary coil is grounded to the coil core. This is one end which is grounded to the coil core and the other end is connected to the ungrounded side of the breaker points. So, here in the figure you can see this is your ungrounded side of the breaker point. This is your grounded side of the breaker point. You can see this point, this contact point, this is grounded, but this is not grounded. So, one end of the primary coil is connected to the ungrounded side of the breaker point. The primary circuit is complete only when two breaker points contact each other. Now, this circuit gets completed only when these two contact points contact each other, then only the circuit gets completed. The purpose of the condenser or the capacitor, this capacitor is to prevent arcing at the points when the breaker contact points open. So, now when these points open, there is a tendency of arcing. So, in order to prevent that arcing across these breaker contact points when they open, this capacitor is provided. It will also hasten the collapse of magnetic field about the primary coil. When the magnet is at full register position, the breaker contact points close. Now, when this magnet is at full register position, in the figure you can see the magnet is at the full register position. In that condition, the contact points close and the circuit gets completed. The rotating magnet, because this rotating magnet will induce a current flow in the primary circuit, because the magnetic lines of force are passing through the coil core and because of this primary coil, there are flux linkages and a primary current is induced in the primary coil. The rotating magnet induces current flow in the primary circuit. This rotating magnet will induce current flow in the primary circuit when the flux begins to reduce from maximum. When this flux begins to reduce from maximum, the rotating magnet will induce current flow in the primary circuit. This current flows during the time that the breaker points are clo closed. So, during the time when these breaker points are closed, this primary current will flow in the primary circuit. The induced current flow in the primary circuit has its own magnetic field. Now, this induced current in the primary circuit will also have its own magnetic field, but as per Lenz's law, this magnetic field will oppose any change in the magnetic flux in the core. So, the magnetic field of this induced current will oppose the change in the magnetic flux in the core. This is as per Lenz's law. Lenz's law states that an induced current always flows in such a direction that its magnetism opposes the motion or the change that induced it. So, this is just to brush up our old uh, physics laws. The flux in the coil core normally changes as represented by the graph, but the primary current prevents this change and holds back the flux change while the magnet turns. So, we have seen in the static flux curve in our previous slide how the flux is changing in the coil core, but the primary current will prevent this change and will hold back the flux change while the magnet turns. The breaker contact points are made to open when the magnet reaches to a position a few degrees past the neutral position. Now, when the magnet reaches a few degrees just past the neutral position, the breaker contact points are made to open. Till this position, the current flowing in the primary circuit holds the flux in the core at a high value in one direction. So, till the point when the contact points are open, the current flowing in the primary circuit will hold the flux in the core at a high value in one direction. The primary current is maintaining the original field in the coil core while the magnet has already turned past neutral. Now, this primary current is maintaining the original field in the coil core, but this magnet has already turned past the neutral. The primary current is now attempting to establish a field through the coil core in the opposite direction. Now, with the primary coil holding the magnetic field of the magnetic circuit in the opposite polarity, a very high rate of flux change can be obtained by opening the primary breaker points. Now, at this point when the primary coil is holding the magnetic field of the magnetic circuit in the opposite polarity, 
when the breaker points are made to open at this point a very high rate of flux change can be obtained the number of degrees of rotation between the neutral position and the position where the contact points are made to open is called the e gap angle or e gap or efficiency gap so this is very important the point at which the contact points are made to open just beyond the neutral position is called the e gap angle or the e gap position the current in the primary circuit stops as the breaker points open now as the breaker points will open the current in the primary circuit will stop and the magnetic rotor reverses the field through the coil core now the current in the primary circuit is stopped because the breaker contact points are open and the magnetic rotor reverses the magnetic field through the coil core the sudden flux reversal produces a high rate of flux change in the core and cuts that cuts the secondary coil the high rate of flux change cutting the secondary coil induces induces high voltage electricity in the secondary coil now because of this high rate of flux change which is cutting the secondary coil a very high voltage is induced in the secondary coil because of this high voltage in the secondary coil the strongest spark is obtained at the instant of breaker point separation further movement of the rotor to full register position closes the breaker points again to repeat the cycle for firing the next spark plug now when magnet is moved to full register position again closes the breaker points again and the cycle is repeated for firing the next spark plug the uh, opening and closing of breaker points is timed by a breaker cam now here in the figure you can see these are your breaker points contact points and this is your cam here this is the breaker cam these points are made to open and close by means of this breaker cam the breaker points close when a maximum amount of flux is passing through the coil core and open at a position of few degrees of magnet movement after neutral so when your maximum amount of flux is passing through the coil core your contact points close and they open when your magnet has passed neutral and is a few degrees beyond neutral now when all the events if we sum up let us see all the events whatever we have read so far as the magnet rotor turns from full register position to neutral position now this is your full register position to neutral position you can see in the graph in the first figure top figure from maximum position full register position to neutral position the amount of flux to the core starts to decrease you can see the amount of flux is decreasing from maximum to minimum to neutral current is induced in the primary coil due to change in flux linkages now because of this decrease in flux because of the change in flux linkages current is induced in the primary coil a magnetic field due to this induced current is created because of this induced current a magnetic field is created which opposes the change of flux linkages inducing the current so we have read as per lenz's law this magnetic field which is due to the induced current this will oppose the change of flux linkages inducing the current the flow of current in the primary coil is interrupted due to open breaker points the flux in the coil core decreases to zero as the magnet rotor turns to neutral and starts to increase in the opposite direction now when the breaker points are made to open because of this these open points the flow of current in the primary coil will be interrupted the flux in the coil core will decrease to zero because the current is interrupted now as the magnet rotor turns to neutral and starts to increase in the opposite direction the electromagnetic action of the primary current prevents the flux from changing and temporarily holds the field instead of allowing it to change now this electromagnetic action of the primary current will prevent the flux from changing and it will temporarily hold the field instead of allowing it to change now by the time the breaker points are about to open high stress develops in the magnetic circuit due to 
temporary holding of the field by the primary current. Now, by the time when the breaker points are about to open, by this time high stress is developed in the magnetic circuit because of this temporary holding of the field by the primary current. When the breaker points open, the flow of current in the primary coil is interrupted resulting in rapid change in flux linkages. Now, when these points are made to open, there is a rapid change in flux linkages and because of this high rate of flux change which is cutting the secondary coil, a high voltage is induced in the secondary coil which discharges across the gap in the spark plug to ignite the fuel air mixture in the engine cylinder. The high rate of flux change cutting the secondary coil will induce high voltage electricity in the secondary coil which will discharge across the gap in the spark plug to ignite the fuel air mixture in the engine cylinder. So, this was about the basic theory and breaker contact points automatically open and close at the proper time in relation to piston position in the cylinder to which an ignition spark is to be provided. The pair of breaker contact points they are made of an alloy that resists pitting and burning. So, they are alloy points and they resist pitting and burning. Coming to the secondary electrical circuit, it comprises of secondary windings of the coil. You see here in the figure secondary windings of the coil, distributor rotor and a distributor cap, then ignition lead and the spark plugs. You can see here the spark plug, you can see the ignition leads. The secondary coil is made up of a large number of turns of fine insulated wire. So, in the primary coil we had few turns of wire, but they were heavy copper wires, but in case of secondary coil you have large number of turns of fine insulated wire, one end of which is electrically grounded to the primary coil or to the coil core and the other end is connected to the distributor rotor. The strength of the voltage induced in the secondary winding the strength of the voltage induced in the secondary winding is dependent on the number of turns of wire. So, the voltage which is induced in the secondary winding will depend on the number of turns of wire. The high voltage induced in the secondary coil is provided to the distributor. The figure you can see here, this is your distributor here, you have a distributor rotor here and you have a distributor block. So, the high voltage which is induced in the secondary coil is provided to the distributor. Distributor has two parts, a revolving part and a stationary part. This is your revolving part which is called a distributor rotor or a distributor gear. This is your stationary part which is termed as the distributor block. The revolving part is called a distributor rotor and a stationary part is called a distributor block. The rotating part which may take the shape of a disc, drum or finger is made of a non-conducting material with an embedded conductor. So, this rotor is also made of a non-conducting material whereas, this block is also made of a non-conducting material and the conducting the conductors are embedded in them. Now, coming to this distributor, we have seen in the figure you can see that you have an engine with 9 cylinders and here you have a distributor where you have numbers 9. In order to fire cylinder number 1, now in order to fire this cylinder number 1, the distributor rotor aligns itself with number 1 electrode in the distributor block. Now the rotor will align, the distributor rotor will align number 1 in the block with the number 1 electrode in the distributor block as the magnet moves into the E gap position and the breaker points just open. So, as the magnet moves into the E gap position and the breaker points just open, in that condition the distributor rotor aligns itself with the number 1 electrode in the distributor block. As the breaker points open, the secondary voltage induced enters the rotor where it arcs a small air gap to the corresponding electrode in the block. So, as the breaker points open, the secondary voltage induced will enter the rotor and it will arc a small gap to the corresponding electrode in the block. 
the secondary voltage induced as the breaker points open enters the rotor where it arcs a small air gap to the number 1 electrode in the block. On four stroke engines the distributor rotates at one half the engine crankshaft speeds. Now coming to this figure if you see that this is your rotor here this is meshed with a gear on the magneto drive shaft. You can see the difference in the sizes of the gear this distributor will rotates the engine crankshaft speeds. The distributor block has many as many electrodes as the number of cylinders are to be served by the magneto. So, you can see here the number of electrodes in the distributor you have 9 here and 9 cylinders are to be fired. The electrodes are located circumferentially around the distributor block and are numbered consecutively in the direction of distributor rotor travel. So, you can see the electrodes they are placed circumferentially and are placed and are numbered you see 1, 2, 3, 4 till 9 they are numbered like this. As the rotor turns each time when the rotor finger and an electrode in the distributor block aligns a circuit is completed to a different cylinder and spark plug. So, when the rotor turns the rotor finger and an electrode in the distributor block aligns and a circuit gets completed to a different cylinder and a spark plug. The numbers on the distributor block indicate the magneto sparking order rather than the engine cylinder numbers. So, the numbers which are mentioned on the distributor block this is not the cylinder number this is the magneto sparking order. The distributor electrode marked number 1 the distributor electrode marked number 1 this is your number 1 electrode is connected to the spark plug in the number 1 cylinder. So, you can see this is connected to the spark plug in the number 1 cylinder. The number 1 electrode in the distributor block is connected to the spark plug in the number 1 cylinder. The distributor electrode marked 2 is connected to the second cylinder to be fired in the firing order. So, the second electrode in the distributor block will not be connected to the cylinder number 2 but it will be connected to the second cylinder which is to be fired in the firing order. So, for example, in case of 6 cylinder engines you have firing order of 1, 4, 5, 2, 3, 6 that is cylinder number 1 to be fired first then cylinder number 4 num then number 5, number 2 then number 3 and then number 6. So, in that case the second cylinder to be fired is cylinder number 4 because the firing order is 1, 4, 5, 2, 3, 6. So, 4 is the second cylinder to be fired. In that case, the second number of electrode on the distributor block will be connected to cylinder number 4, not cylinder number 2. And the distributor electrode marked 3 is connected to the third cylinder to be fired in the firing order and so forth. So, on the distributor block, you have the markings, you have the numberings as per the magneto sparking order. Now, coming to primary capacitor, what is the primary capacitor, what is its purpose? Voltage and current is induced in both the primary and secondary windings of the coil during magneto operation. The primary current arcs across the breaker points when open resulting in reduced collapse of the field and wear and weak spark output. So, the primary current this has a tendency of arcing across the breaker points when the breaker points are made to open this will eventually result in a reduced collapse of field and finally a weak spark output. This primary capacitor this is connected across the breaker points here in the figure you can see these are the contact points this is your capacitor this is connected just parallel to the contact points to absorb sudden rise of voltage in the primary coil as the breaker points open. So, as the breaker points open in order to absorb that sudden rise of voltage this capacitor is fitted. The primary capacitor absorbs the inertia current induced in the primary coil and prevents arcing between the breaker contact points as they open. The function of the primary capacitor is thus to absorb self induced current flowing in the primary circuit and act as a storage chamber. The capacitance of the primary capacitor used should be of the correct value. In case if too low capacitance capacitor is being used 
then it will permit arcing and burning of the breaker points and finally, a weak output will result. In case capacitor is of a very high capacitance, it will also result in weak output due to mismatch between the coil and the capacitor. Now, in both the cases where the capacitor is of low capacitance or of high capacitance, in both the cases we will have weak output. The primary capacitor is always connected across the points, but, it, but its shape and location varies. Next is ignition harness. So, we have seen in the ignition system, the magneto, we have read about the magneto, we have read about the parts in the magneto. Second is your ignition harness, which connects the magneto to the spark plug. The electrical energy from the magneto is directed to the spark plug by means of ignition leads. So, these ignition leads, they connect the magneto to the spark plug and transfer the electrical energy from the magneto to the spark plug. The ignition harness comprises of insulated wires for each cylinder being served by the magneto. So, it has got insulated wires here in the figure, you can see you have the insulated wires. Insulated wires are connected to magneto distributor block at one end and spark plug at the other end. So, we will see physically this, these harnesses and one end of the harness connects to the spark plug and the other end is connected to the distributor block in the magneto. The purposes of ignition leads are, it serves as a conductor path for the high tension voltage to the spark plug. Secondly, it also acts as a shield for stray magnetic fields that surrounds the wires by conducting these magnetic lines of force to ground. So, it is also acting as a shield for the stray magnetic lines of force and, and conducts these magnetic lines of force to the ground. Thus, electrical interference with aircraft avionics is minimized by the ignition harness. So, this ignition harness is solving two purposes. It is serving as a conducting path for high voltage from the magneto to the spark plug. It, secondly, it is also acting as a shield and minimizing electrical interference with the avionics equipment on the aircraft. The center of the ignition lead is the high voltage carrier. Now, see the center here you see in the lead, the center it has the high voltage carrier. It is surrounded by a silicon insulator material. You can see the insulator just around the center electrode, center conductor. You can see a insulator and this insulator is surrounded by a metal meshing or shielding. So, inside you have a conductor which is the high voltage carrier. Just outside the conductor you have an insulator and then you have a metal meshing or shielding. It is further covered with a thin silicon rubber coating that prevents damage by engine heat, vibration or weather. So, this is in the in this figure if you see this end of the harness or the ignition lead connects to the spark plug. This is the end which connects to the spark plug. Coming to another important unit in the ignition system is the ignition switch, a very important unit which controls the entire ignition system. An ignition switch controls all the units in an aircraft ignition system. Its purpose is to short circuit the breaker points of the magneto and to prevent collapse of the primary circuit required for production of a spark. The type of switch used depends on the number of engines on the aircraft and the type of magnetos used. So, there are varieties of switches available. The type of switch which is to be used depends on the number of engines on the aircraft being used and the type of magnetos being used. The ignition switch is different from all other types of switches. In other electrical switches, the off position norm normally breaks or opens the circuit. So, in all other switches, the off position will normally break the circuit or open the circuit, but in case of ignition switch, in the off position, a circuit is completed through the switch to ground. So, this is a very important point. In ignition switch, a circuit gets completed through the switch to ground in the off position, whereas in normal switches, in off position, 
the circuit breaks or opens. One terminal of the ignition switch is connected to the primary electric circuit. You can see here in the figure, this is your ignition switch. One terminal is connected to the primary of the primary circuit of the coil between the coil and the breaker contact points and the other terminal to the ground. You see this is your ignition switch, one end connected to the ground and the other end is connected to the primary of the coil. The lead that connects the switch and the primary circuit is termed as the P lead. Now, if we observe the figure, the primary circuit it can be completed in two ways through the closed breaker points to ground. Now, when these points contact points they touch each other, you have the circuit completed to ground or through the closed ignition switch to ground or when the ignition switch is closed, then also you have grounding and you have a complete circuit. With the ignition switch in the off position, the primary current still has a path to ground. So, you can see here in the figure, you have the off position here with the switch in the off position still you can have grounding here, there is a path to ground. Thus, the primary current is not interrupted even when the breaker points open. So, in this case, when your switch is in the off position, even when the breaker points are open, in that case also your primary current is not interrupted. Since there is no interruption of the primary current when the contact points open, there is no sudden collapse of the primary coil flux and no high voltage is induced in the secondary coil to fire the spark plug in the cylinders. So, since there is no interruption of the primary current, there is no high voltage induced in the secondary coil to fire the spark plug in the cylinders.